Hi, welcome to my podcast, Talking Travel with Wendy. I travel the globe interviewing really cool people in small hospitality and tourism businesses. Join me each week as I discover and share something or someone new with you. You can find more at www.travelwithwendy.net. And remember, it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy. This past fall, I had the lovely opportunity to visit the Lazio province of Italy and be introduced to Emma and Scott, owners of Olive Hill Sabina. This special olive farm just outside of Rome makes a great day trip or a weekend getaway to learn the process from planning to harvest. Agritourism is a big business in Italy, and more and more travelers want to have cultural and interactive experiences while they travel. Immersing yourself in nature through hiking or helping with the growing or harvesting of a crop like olives and grapes for wine in Italy is really big. Not only do you form friendships, but now you are connected to others as well as the earth. Here's a little bit of an interview that I had while I was visiting this past month. Hi, thanks so much for joining us here today on Talking Travel with Wendy. I am here with my new friends, Emma and Scott of Olive Hill Sabina in Italy. And they're going to tell us a little bit about olive oil, what it's like to move to Italy. Tell me a little bit about what got you here. Well, we're both ex-military. And laterally, I was in the Royal Air Force for 37 years. And Emma was in the Air Force until the early 90s, uh, mid-90s. And uh, I was based in Rome doing my final assignment uh, in the NATO Defence College as the UK's senior national representative. And we went out looking for a little holiday home (laughs) up in the the hills beyond Rome to get away from the heat in the summer, the noise, the tourists, and just be able to break away at weekends. And uh, we were looking for something small, a little two-bedroom place with a terrace so we can sip a glass of wine on a, a Friday evening. But after 47 properties (laughs) properties <laughs> that we were we around each one getting progressively larger and more expensive we had come to realize that actually maybe the time was right to stop being in the military now do something completely different okay. break away and we bought uh, this place here which is uh, we call it olive hill sabina which is a, a, a fairly large olive farm about 400 trees yeah. 22 acres it's gorgeous and a, and a, and a big farmhouse yeah Madness. Yeah. Thank you for letting me, all of us, walk it the yeah, other night. Yeah. It's so pretty. It was a fun evening as well. It was great. Yeah, really fun. <laughs> really fun. And Emma? So, um, yeah, we took the house on, um, realised quite fast that, uh, that there was quite a lot to do. Mm-hmm. Inside was still a 1970s timepiece, so we ripped that apart, started again, lived for six months with no doors, no windows, nothing, no floors, no electricity. Yeah, um, absolutely no water. Oh, yeah. wow. Which um, is a fairly typical Italian villa from the south. Okay. Side. <laughs> <laughs> and outside we had 400 olive trees, which were, some of them were two stories high, um, totally abandoned for 10 years. So we, we learned all about olive farming because right. we started from zero knowledge. Yeah. Um, and uh, over the last five years, we've created a, a totally functioning olive farm. Functioning olive farm. Olive farm and Certified organic. And an experienced visitors. destination. Yeah. And you've you've created quite a community here too. Yeah. Oh, yes. So yeah. that's been that's been pretty cool. Speaking of experiences, how can people find out about an experience? So we're on the internet, um, olivehillsabina.com. Okay. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram at Olive Hill Sabina. Okay. Um, and, uh, and we do a variety of, of experiences and blog about what we're doing here. People okay. can come and taste the oil, visit the farm. Yeah. Uh, meet the maker days, that type of thing. In fact, we did a harvest experience this week as well for people. Yeah, that's interesting. Share with us a story that were, was a bit challenging for you. Well, I think most people imagine Italy being quite a bureaucratic uh, nation. And I suppose most of us think our own countries are quite bureaucratic. But when you're doing working and living in a country that's not your mother tongue, Yes. Buying a house, yeah. renovating a house, wow. starting an olive farm from no knowledge. Uh, the challenges of the language can become quite uh, quite interesting, and uh, we've had a we've had a few interesting moments with the uh, with the bureaucracy in particular, um, and 
one I think that uh, you might want to talk about is, so, a, is a bit of a, a mess up and understanding is we, what I would we, call it. We got to the point this spring where we thought we had nailed the language and we were used to the bureaucracy so um, we applied for planning permission to get a bed and breakfast room here. Okay. And uh, one evening, completely by surprise, arrived my Colderetti, which is the farmers union, my official and two random bureaucrats, we had no idea who they were, and they appeared and said, yeah, we're here to, uh, to help you with the planning permission. So in they come to the house and they're examining all the plans and they said, but, but where's the room, to our Italian anyway, where's the room for the male stripper? <laughs> <laughs> and of course we're looking at each other at this point going, do, do we actually understand that the same way? And we said, yes, we understood, they're asking us where the male... From- Male stripper the room was, for the male strippers. The room for the male strippers. So we had to ask them to clarify. And they, <laughs> they explained it almost the same way again, but not using the same words. So we went, okay, so we, we'll leave we it said, at that. Yes, of course we've got a room for a male stripper. Of course we have. I mean, why would we not? And, uh, and off they went, happy that we were providing this service. And it was about a week later we finally figured out that actually they were looking for a room to strip in, i.e. a changing, changing room. room. <laughs> But that's Lots just a, a small yeah. translation yeah. issue. We've had many, many, many translation issues, most of which haven't been quite so amusing. But uh... that's funny. That's great. That's great. <laughs> okay, so you said you kind of learned from scratch how to do the olives and the olive grove, and and you had told us the other day that there were something over 100 different varieties, right? Um, 190. 190. So yeah. it's almost 200. And you've been able to figure out what kind of varieties that you've had. And I know just from my gardening experience, some of them require certain care and soil and sun. And that had to be a challenge in itself, too. Absolutely. Well, when, when you, you have no knowledge at all, how do you find out? Yeah. And so we went and did a small course up near Florence for a week, learning how to tend, to um, to cultivate, to prune, and prepare olives. And then, of course, we used the University of Google, which yes. is amazingly <laughs> clever. And, of course, when you ask 10 of your neighbours how yeah. do you do olive farming and right. how do they do olive farming, right. you get 10 different answers. Right. So uh, it's been really just looking at it from um, probably even a military sort of background and, and working it out bit by bit, which, which way do we want to go? And actually, in the end, we've we've decided to, to not be quite conventional. Um, most of the olive oil is produced in Italy, and that's for mass consumption. But to go down that very small, boutique, mm-hmm. um, specialist way. Yeah. Actually, we're finding that, whereas in the past, the Italians around here would look at us, and the locals would say, all these strange foreigners, these Brits, they're mad, they won't be able to make olive oil like we do. We're now finding they're coming to us and asking us how we're doing it. And, oh, good. And, and why... Why, yeah. why are we doing it this way? Because they're interested and they're finding out that actually there's another way to possibly do olive oil. And well, that's a great collaboration, right? We applied for organic status in 2018. Mm-hmm. What that brought on board was a rep from the Organic Certification Board who comes and not only supports us, but also challenges us to make sure that we're farming in accordance oh, with their standards. Yeah, yeah. So they give us a lot of support. And then the other people are this Calderetti, the Farmers Union, who okay. are incredibly supportive. And then I had to do 150 hours of training okay. um, to become a qualified farmer in Italian um, with 100% pass rate exam to sit at the end wow. of it. So um, actually Emma's so, the farmer, yeah. I'm just the farm hand. <laughs> so, well, but you're in, forced to learn as yeah. well, aren't you? That's the thing. And in retirement, that will be the same in my house as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well the it's travel interesting. writer and the travel researcher. It's interesting you say retirement <laughs> because... It, it doesn't feel like retirement sometimes. <laughs> well, you guys went right from that to, to work with Correct, us yeah. here. So, so you sell mostly to the UK, right? It's a bit of both nowadays. We sell okay. a lot on the farm visits that we do here. Okay. Um, we sell a lot locally as well. We've got a lot of friends and people who've heard about the type of oil okay. we're producing now. So we, we do sell a lot locally now. Mm. Oh, that's um, right. But then, yeah, we head back to the UK just after harvest is finished and we do sort of Christmas markets and stately home events. We're going to Durham this year, mm-hmm. aren't we? To the Christmas market at the cathedral there, Not only example. do we take the oil back, but we, we have a sort of a, it's almost a small business that we had going before we even came to Italy, which is called Well Oiled. Okay. And we just resurrected that. And now we, we go back and we're selling the 
the olive oil that we produce. But we're also making pestos and tapenades. Oh, wonderful. And, and, and Italian Showing you produce. how to use the exactly. oil Exactly, well. showing people yeah. how, how you can yeah. use the olive oil to make other things. Because you also get to meet tons of people. And let's talk about the experiences. What do those include? How people can experience being here as well? Do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Well, we have a number of experiences, and, and, and it's all based around the olive oil. But not just our olive oil. So, for example, we have oil tastings, okay. where we invite people to come and join us for an evening, usually because it's nice to be here when the sun sets, particularly in the summer, where we have a visit down to the grove, a bit of education about the trees, show people how we cultivate the trees, yeah, and, and, <laughs> and prepare and even do the harvest, even if we do it in the middle of the, of the spring or the summer, we show people how we harvest. And then they come up and they do a, a tasting of olive oils, not just ours, we do a tour of, of Italy, so maybe something from Tuscany, something from Puglia, mm -hmm. something from Sicily, oh, yeah. and as well as our own oil. Um, and then there's a afterwards there's a chance to wind down and then taste our oil, not just in the degustazione, you know, tasting way, but with food. Prep. Yeah. So we provide a, a nice apericena, it's called here in Italy, which is a, an aperitivo with a, a small meal, light yeah. meal of some sliced hams, cheeses, and which you can add the olive oil to, to see which of the olive oils you've tasted, plus a few others we leave out on the table, which ones you like and how they pair with different yeah. foods. So again, it's a, it's an experience and an education. So that's one thing we do. Got the bed and breakfast bed room that will open in, uh, in April. Oh, so, excellent. Uh, yeah, April 24th. Uh, yeah, excellent. And then we also, for example, this, we just done one a few days ago, we had a, a harvest experience where people from all over, you know, quite a few Americans actually, yeah. uh, who came and joined us for the harvest day. They were out there in the field with us, they were helping pull the, the olives off the trees, pull the nets around, gather up the olives, and do the work that we would do. And then we came up and had a, a pasta lunch with, uh, with a glass of nice Italian wine. Mm -hmm. And we sit and chat again about what we've done, the experiences. And, uh, and then they can come back and join us again. It's yeah. another way as well to see the local area. So after lunch, we took them up to our local mill. So they drive down through the beautiful yes. hill town of Tarano. Yes. And uh, yeah. the guy that owns our mill gave them a fabulous guided tour. Oh, wonderful. Um, explaining exactly what machine did which. And he's really passionate yeah. about his oil. So that's awesome. in fact, so we got to the, local business. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah lots that, of collaboration. That's the idea. You know, we, 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 we never wanted to come and step on anybody else's toes. We wanted to do our thing. And then we, we discovered very quickly, we did have a friend who was doing uh, olive oil tastings, but he then moved to Spain. So he sort of left this hole and people asking us about, well, where, where can we go and taste the oil? So he says, well, why don't we do it ourselves? So again, we did some reading up and finding out about olive, taste, olive oil tasting. And we did a course with him We did a course well. with him. And, uh, and here we are now, we're doing you know, these, yeah. these wonderful evenings and we do Two or three a week, yeah. and we're quite flexible. We don't uh, we don't have any hard and fast days. We try to get a, a nice group together. Um, it might not just be two people; it could be ten people, mm -hmm. all from different parts of the world, mm -hmm. all coming together. We treat them like the Italian family around the table, right. and uh, we we try to make it as, as as relaxing and enjoyable and educational. And uh, we have the saying that you know that you can ask as many questions as you like because there are no stupid questions, but there may be some dumb answers. <laughs> um, well, and your location is great because you're about 45 minutes to 50 minutes from Rome. Yeah. So it makes for a great day trip. And you get to see the Sabina Hills. Exactly. Absolutely. Which yeah. is beautiful, especially yeah. at sunset. Yes. <laughs> and, and on all that, of course, as you say, we're only a, a very short there was a train that was direct from the airport yeah. to the station just down 10 minutes from here. Mm. But are we also... Uh, people come from central Rome and we can we can pick them up from the station sure. so it's all quite relaxed and, and easy to get here and then of course even by road it's it's less than a, an hour 45 minutes by road yeah. and very very flexible we're only uh, you know an hour or so from Benor Vieto or, mm -hmm. or Nami yeah. Terni so we're, we're, we're quite well located yes. for some of the hubs around that people uh, come into including Perugia Airport for example which right. is only 70 minutes from here. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so tell our viewers again one more time, where can you find more information? So our main website is www.olivehillsabina.com. We're on Instagram, at Olive Hill Sabina. We're on Facebook, Olive Hill Sabina. And then also Google Maps, if you, if you put in a search term of Olive Hill Sabina, 
um, or extra virgin olive oil tastings in Sabina, etc. Yeah, um, we'll yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, excellent. There's very few of us around, so we're very <laughs> easy to find. Well, thank you guys so much yeah. for sitting down and chatting with me today. It's a pleasure. It's, it's been great. And, You're welcome. Um, please come back. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you need to come in the autumn so you can do I'm some excited. hiking. Yeah, <laughs> autumn. And I definitely want to be part of the harvest too. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. What a great opportunity to sit down with Emma and Scott. For more information on Olive Hill Sabina or to book an Italian agriturismo experience, check out the links below or my blog that I've written or schedule a travel consultation with me. The links to my calendar are also in the description below. Remember, it's always an adventure when you travel with Wendy. Ciao!